Good evening, I'm Braden Stone. Coming up in the newscast, ways to help her to recover from Hurricane Sandy and details on a shooting in Kutztown. And I'm Steve Majiri, and I have your updates with the football team, the basketball team, and I have my shout-out segment for the week. Also, Kyle Ashenfelder has the weather. News break <laughs> begins now. Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week is this week, and all week there will be a food drive. Bring your non-perishable food to the Community Outreach Center tomorrow, Wednesday the 14th. Join Oxfam America in lobbying Congress for food justice. This event will be held in the MSU from 11 to 2, and you can stop in any time during those hours. Berks County detectives are investigating an early morning shooting in Kutztown on Saturday where both a suspect and an off-duty officer fired shots. A car carrying three males drove through an intersection at about 2.30 a.m. in the 300 block of Main Street in Kutztown, where a group of seven males were walking across the street. The car pulled over, and the three males confronted the other group. The driver admitted to firing the shots and said a handgun found inside the car was, in fact, his. The driver has a gun permit, and all three men were released pending further investigation. Their names have not been released because they have not been charged with a crime. Let's take a look at last week's video game competition, sponsored by ACE. We're here in the sub where the Association of Campus Events and the Gaming Club have teamed up for a night of fun. Whether you're a professional gamer or just hanging out with friends, the night has something for everyone. A large crowd came out on Friday to test their skills among other KU students. Uh, we're having quite a large uh, video game tournament where we have a uh, Halo going on, we have a uh, Super Smash Brothers and DDR were with prizes, and then we have casual gaming going on all over as well. Over 200 students with a broad range of gaming experience came out to win the prizes. I decided to come out to play Halo Reach. I used to play professionally, so I want to show these people what I got. Winners went home with copies of Halo 4, Xbox Live memberships, an iPod Touch, and a 32-inch HDTV. The night was a success and will hopefully become an annual tradition. For Newsbreak, I'm Haley Bianco. Now back to you at the desk. So, Steve, uh, were you at the video game? Uh, no, I missed it, but uh, nah. I hear it's very impressive. The hand-eye yeah. coordination of those guys is just ridiculous. Yeah, it probably. It was probably a cool tournament. Uh, yeah. I wish I could have been there. Yeah, me too. Uh, but uh, let's uh, go to. Uh, let's take a break. So, Steve, the weather's been really weird lately. It was, yeah, it was been, fairly warm yesterday. Then it's other days it's been cold. Like today, yeah. I say we, I say we have Kyle give us the five-day forecast. We yeah. know what to expect. Kyle, what, what, are we hoping, what are we looking at? Well, uh, guys, it has been a little warm lately, but it is, it is getting uh, colder today. It was pretty cold tonight, too. Uh, when Braden and I went out to move our cars, it was really cold, so it's getting chilly again. Uh, today we had a high of 37. It was partly cloudy, so some of the day was sunny, and some of the day was just dreary. Anyway, tonight we're going to have a low of 32. It'll be partly cloudy again, so if you want to go stargazing, uh, time it right. Uh, tomorrow we have a high of 37. It'll be partly cloudy and a low of 32. And for the rest of the week, it should be pretty, pretty dry for the most part. On Thursday, we have a high of 44, partly cloudy. On Friday, a nice sun, sunshiny day with 48 degrees. On Saturday, we're getting into that spring weather again. Uh, it's going to be a high of thir uh, 53 and a low of 36. On Sunday, and of course Sunday, of course it'd be sunny. It's Sunday, come on. 
And we have a high of 56 and a low of 40 on that day. And even warmer again on Monday. A high of 59, partly cloudy, a low of 45. We're getting into spring. Tell you what, we're getting into spring weather again. It feels like it. Anyway, so yeah, tonight it will be a little bit chilly, so it's a good good night to go inside and play video games, just like those people on that uh, on that package. So go enjoy your video games, especially Black Ops 2. Go for it. Have a good evening, everybody. Back to you two studs at the desk. The White House petition website has been flooded by a series of secession requests with malcontent from New, to, from New Jersey to North Dakota, submitting their petitions to allow their states to withdraw from the Union. All told, petitions have been filed on behalf of 20 Democratic and Republican states alike. The White House promises that if a petition does meet the signature threshold, it will be reviewed by the administration and we will issue a response. The threshold is, is 25,000 signatures in 30 days, and only one of the secession petitions have reached the threshold. Texas did in fact surpass 25,000 signatures today. On Wednesday, November 7th, ACE held an event, Witness to Innocence. A large crowd came out to hear Jeremy Sheets' story about being falsely convicted of murder. Sheets was on death row for four years and was going to face the death penalty via the electric chair. Sheets was released from jail after his witness committed suicide and there was a lack of evidence. Sheets was in jail for a total of five years for a crime he did not commit. He urged his students to learn about the negative issues involving the death penalty. Did you happen to go to that uh, spe uh, the, uh, speech, Steve? Uh, no, I missed it, but I do yeah. actually have a, I'm actually writing a speech on the negative uh, uh, size of the death penalty, yeah. actually. That's... It should be very interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. Excellent. Let's take a break. And now to sports, where the KU football team won its third straight game last Saturday by a final score of 47-21. to Quarterback Kevin Morton was his usual self, completing 38-50 of passes for 369 yards and three touchdowns. Brett Fox and Zach Snyder each had 100 yards receiving and each had a score. Defensively, Sam Dixon Dugan had 13 tackles to lead the team and sophomore English P had an interception. The KU offense started out slow and the Golden Bears found themselves trailing 21-14 to at halftime. But in the second half, the Golden Bears were nearly flawless, scoring on their first six possessions of the second half and scoring 33 unanswered points. Morton's three touchdown passes extended his career total to 117, which is good for fifth in Division II history. The Golden Bears will look to salvage their season and end it on a high note when they play their final game of the season against LIU Post. KU will look to send its seniors off the right way on senior night. Kickoff will be at 1 p.m. Saturday at University Field. And now to men's basketball, where the Golden Bears fell short in a close, well-fought game against Concord with a final score of 79-73. KU was nursing a small lead heading into the fourth as the teams went back and forth throughout the contest until Concord took the lead with 10 minutes to go and then took the lead for good with 80 seconds to go. KU had trouble on the glass all night as they gave up 13 offensive rebounds to Concord. KU did hit 95% of its free throws, but their bench was only able to register 10 points to Concord's 34. Senior Micah Fraction led KU with 28 points and Tyler Brooks chipped in with 17, but Concord's balanced scoring attack proved too much in the end. KU falls to 0-2 on the season with the loss, and will look to get back on track tomorrow night at Wilmington. And now for my shout-out segment. This shout-out goes to those affected by Hurricane Sandy. I wanted to give this shout-out last week, but as you know, I wasn't able to be on the air at that night, and I still think this still deserves many. Hurricane Sandy has taken the lives of more than 80 people as of now, and it has left countless people homeless. Financial losses from the hurricane are in the vicinity of $50 billion. 
We need to come together as a community and help those affected by the hurricane as they go through this troubling time in their life. The American Red Cross Association is accepting donations in many different ways. To help, you can donate $10 by simply texting the word Red Cross to 90999. A simple act of altruism like this can go a long way, and these victims need our help. Millions of people have lost almost everything they own, and they deserve, they deserve to be in our thoughts as we work to overcome this as a community and a nation. That's all for sports. Now back to you, Braden. Well, that's all I have for you tonight. We'll see you again Thursday. For Braden, Kyle, and the rest of the crew, good, good night. night.